All right, we're going to talk about variable geometry turbochargers and 6 liters and 6 fours here and the basic common failure points in these turbochargers. But first of all, we're going to talk about some of the theory about how the variable geometry turbocharger works and, and why it's so effective in making power in the 6 liter. Variable geometry turbocharger uh, setup was originally uh, introduced in the 6 liter uh, in 2003 model year. It's the thing that makes that engine make so much power, especially off of the line. Uh, one of the things that people like about their 6 liters is it has a lot of punch off the get-go. Well, the variable geometry turbocharger basically could make full boost off idle because of the feature. You know, in a 7.3, you got to let it wind up a little bit. Just the size of the engine pulls it through. That situation has been alleviated by this technology. But as with anything that requires moving parts, they do wear out. There are problems that occur with them, and that's what this video is about. In front of us here is a, a couple turbochargers taken apart uh, to demonstrate, first of all, how VGT works, and then we're going to talk about some little problems that we see. VGT is operated in a 6 liter with a solenoid here, and, it's, and it uses oil uh, to move the solenoid back and forth. And there's a plunger that works through the top of the turbocharger. And what it does is it makes this what they call the exciter ring. This is actually the control ring that controls the veins inside the turbo. As you can see, the veins move open and close. And as these veins move open and close, it directs the, the exhaust flow across the turbine, which, of course, in turn pushes a compressor and makes boost. By turning these veins way down, wide open, onto the impeller, even at low exhaust flow levels, it can make the turbochargers spin at very high rates of speed. That's how you make the boost off idle. That's what makes a 6 liter have the punch that it does coming off the line. Every truck that comes in that's having the bulletproof procedure done to it, we disassemble the turbochargers and clean this area. It's very common for this area to become coked up with carbon and, and rust and scale and this sort of thing. So we, we clean this area just as a preventative measure to make sure that there's going to be no problems. As far as failures go, we've seen a bunch of the, the, the VGT solenoids go bad. And this solenoid is you know, electronically actuated and, and oil fired and whatnot. And there's a lot of heat in this area, so it's common for a solenoid. It's just an electrical winding inside there. They do go bad. There's an electrical failure that does occur. What I want to demonstrate to you here is actually a mechanical failure of the VGT aspect of the turbo. As you can see in this one, it's basically worn out. As you can see right here, the slot that this rides in, the solenoid pin rides in, is just plain worn out. It's broken. And as a result, this uh, turbocharger just wouldn't make any boost offline. See, what happens is, is that the, the VGT solenoid actuates this, and it would move this whole distance, but the ring wouldn't move so because of, uh, because of the, the slot being opened up so far. And as a result, we weren't getting any boost off, offline. What's very common for us to see in uh, VGT problems is at least a slight elongation of the hole or a deformation of the pin here where it's, where it's worn out on one side. And this can cause a little bit of a turbo lag uh, in the off-the-line performance. And these are all things that can be repaired fairly easily. The other thing is, is that in high performance applications, when there's a lot of heat put in here, uh, it's, it's very common to see failures in terms of turbines, turbine blades being melted, um, the shafts get broken in the, uh, in the actual turbine side. Ford Motor Company now offers j just the center of the, of the turbocharger. In other words, you can still use your housing, your outer housing, and your exhaust side housing, and you just replace the center of the turbo, and it's a whole bunch cheaper than buying a whole new turbocharger. Or in our case, we have a good many used ones laying around from motors that I bought over the years. So that's, that's the solution to fixing this. Now, this truck was, was an in-town truck that was constantly um, um, accelerating and decelerating in traffic. It came off of a, a fairly large box truck that was this delivery here in Atlanta. So this one just got worn out just out of basic usage. But that's a pretty severe case of, of uh, turbocharger failure that's not readily apparent without disassembling it. A quick overview of the 6.4 liter turbocharger, which is a dual turbocharger. A lot of people call them twin turbos, but that's not technically accurate. Uh, twin turbocharger setup would be two identical turbos, one on each bank of four cylinders. That's not the case here. 
The 6.4 dual turbocharging system uses a small turbocharger to jump off the line and then a big turbocharger with a mechanical VGT, very different system than the hydraulically type actuated VGT system of the 6 liter. Uh, and the big one kicks in and, and, and that's when you hit uh, hyperspace on the far end of the, of, the, of the acceleration scale. It's a beautiful system and it works fantastic. Uh, most of the failures that are in the 6.4 turbo actually have little or nothing to do with the turbocharger. What kills the turbochargers in a 6.4 is the regeneration of the DPF, the diesel particulate filter, which if you listen to any of my other videos I've complained about extensively how it simply doesn't work very well. But basically the idea is, is that you've got a, a can that's down the line of your exhaust, that's coming out of your exhaust pipe, that gets full of soot and then they've got to heat up, the, the engineers have, heat, have to heat up that soot to turn it to ash. Well, the way they do it is they put raw fuel into the, into the number seven and eight cylinders on the exhaust stroke, so you have all this 1500 degree heat that's coming into the turbocharger, okay, and then back out the exhaust to burn this carbon into ash. Well, you know, unless you're using aerospace materials like titanium and whatnot, which I guarantee you are not in this turbocharger because they couldn't afford the turbo if they did, you're going to have failure. So primarily the tur turbo in and of itself works beautifully. It's the regeneration process that causes most of the failures in the 6.4 turbocharger. The variable geometry turbocharger is one of the most wonderful inventions that's been brought into the diesel world. It requires some sophisticated electronics to be able to set the timing correctly along with adding the fuel to the combustion chamber during uh, acceleration process. Uh, it is an industry standard all the way from the F-250 all the way up to the big class 8 big rigs. It allows the, the computer to control fuel and boost on a very precise level to give the optimal amount of power for any given situation. But as we all know, if you make something more complicated, there's more room for failure. So there's really not a lot to do for maintenance other than just go out and run the truck every now and then. We see a lot of problems here where, where turbochargers will come in and they'll be rusty from where the truck has been sitting up and, and uh, damp air will get up the exhaust pipe and, and rust these pieces. These are all iron pieces. So it'll rust the, the actual exciter ring and everything together inside the turbo and has to be taken apart. So if you're going to store your truck, for a long period of time. might be a good idea to stick a tennis ball or something up the tailpipe uh, just to keep that damp air from going in there. And, and drive your truck, okay? Go out and, and, and do a jackrabbit start with it when you are driving it so that it will actually actuate all these parts inside the turbocharger and keep them working as they should.